Okay, I'm getting ready to pack up this Precision uh, International or PG uh, Technologies uh, video system. Uh, this is made in England uh, and they are uh, highly accurate and very uh, nice accessory for a tool room. Uh, they're used in watching the grinding of a workpiece on the machine. Now this is eventually going to be mounted to the machine in back here and we'll possibly in another video we'll touch on uh, some of the mounting, uh, getting this thing set up. But right now, uh, just wanted to talk about this before I break it all down and, and start packing it up and putting it in boxes uh, for you. So right now I'm simulating what this would be like on the machine itself. Um, you can see what I'm looking at, it's a little kind of a comb-like uh, a piece here. There's a balance or counterbalance because of the weight of this unit here uh, to offset that and so that the table movement is smooth. You have a heavy, this is a heavy steel base with even heavier steel back wall. This is solid and it has a movable hinged uh, face here where people clamp a piece of white paper. So as I shine my light on, on this white paper, you see my image becomes a lot brighter. Uh, so the distance where this is is not critical. It can be mounted anywhere on the machine, but basically it's, it's going to have to be in one particular area. What is important is your space between the front of the lens and the part that you just ground. Now there's an optimal distance where it's completely in focus, but it's a very small distance. So you only have about four inches or just under four inches. Um, once this thing is mounted up on the machine, you need to take that into consideration. Whatever, whatever part that you're going to grind, um, you have to take in consideration the height that you want to mount this or how you can go from one range to another. This has about a two inch travel. In other words, if this was mounted on uh, the grinder and you were to bring this down onto the chuck itself, you would be able to go back up from that point two more inches. Uh, if you needed to go higher than that, then this whole unit needs to be raised up on on uh, risers or some kind of uh, little pads and you know it has to be done accurately. Uh, so you do have a adjustment here of back and forth or the X and up and down to look. Uh, you're not looking at the grinding wheel with this, you're actually looking at what you just ground or you could look at the wheel and your workpiece and manipulate the machine. I, I'm not exactly sure but uh, I just want to show you how this is working what this is all about. Now there's normally a light source that comes with this, which is this, which is going to mount here, and then this plugs into a separate power supply, which uh, we have on back order right now. We're waiting for that to come in and we'll be getting it to you either directly from uh, our supplier or we'll be sending it to you shortly. So anyway, uh, this is your DRO. You see here as we change, this is a Heidenhain, and the monitor itself is a little old-fashioned. Uh, I was told that that can be replaced with a modern, uh, a certain type. Uh, not every type will work, but there are some flat screens. I don't know if this is color or only black and white. Um, I'm telling you what I know. So we're going to break this down. Everything is going to get packaged up individually. So you've got your monitor. And then everything kind of plugs into, if we, if we can come around to the back of this. Everything plugs into a power supply, which then gets plugged into your 110 volt. Uh, but you also have some kind of interface here for your video monitor and for the camera. Uh, I, it's probably just a, 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 just a connection. I don't know exactly what it is. This is the camera section and this is the uh, portion of it that allows you to move the lens uh, up and down and left and right. And then this is your, your digital readout. So all these items will be bubble wrapped and wrapped up separately uh, in different boxes and then probably all packed into one wooden crate. Uh, I'm going to disassemble this and I'm going to show you that uh, on a different video. Uh, how you take this lens section out of here so that it's easier for me to wrap it up and not have it get damaged and so you'll know how to put it together when you get it. Alright so for now uh, I'm just going to say thank you and goodbye. Alright so this is the main unit, this is the camera unit um, 
and it has a lot of cable. You got your X and your Y axis, plus you got your video feed. I'd say there's uh, six to seven feet of cable here. Uh, so depending on where you want to mount your monitor and where you want to mount those other items that I showed you, uh, you can either make brackets right on the machine itself. You probably want to keep the monitor either on a, on a movable stand, like a music stand type of thing next to the grinder, or uh, possibly if it's next to a shelf or in a corner. But they've given you plenty of cable here. Uh, the monitor and the other cables are kind of short, but I think that you could probably find something to find it longer. So I'm going to take off the lens, which in this case just unscrews from the front here. And I'm going to set it over here for the time being. And you got to find a little thread there. I'll, I'll probably put something over that. Uh, in the back here, if we move the camera around to this side, um, probably you can't see in there, but there's a couple of mechanisms that you loosen a, a little kind of a cam lock and you can uh, start to slide this whole thing out of here. So now you got this. So it's all going to be separated, but once it's all installed on your place, you probably want to get some uh, wire ties, and they got a couple of little uh, spots here for your wire ties, and then this, this cable was, before, uh, before I cut them all, banded together every 12 inches or so, and it made, it made a nice, neat cable out of it. But we're going to wrap this up separately, and cover this up, and wrap the lens up separately. And so when you get it, uh, what you got to do now now this is part of the focus mechanism. Once you have this whole thing mounted securely on the grinder and your part is clamped down in a vise and it's on the magnet, you don't want to move that. So if you need to make minute focusing, this apparatus here, turning this knob, you have to study it when you get it, uh, it's the kind of thing you got to learn on the job, will move this uh, in and out. If it's, if these, this is like a clamp here. When that's tightened up from the side here, it'll allow this lens to be adjusted in and out you know, maybe fifty thousandths or a hundred thousandths. But anyway, so you got to slip this inside the hole again and just make sure it's all lined up. And then the front here, if you come around the front, this is just a rubber, a rubber boot that floats around there. Uh, so you got you to find the, the front of the lens and get it in there. And then this here, it can be moved in all kinds of directions, I guess, just to give you uh, I don't know. I would keep it straight up and down. This whole round cylinder here has a series of different screens in there, round screens that you'll see on your monitor. So when you loosen the lock screw and the clamping nut here and rotate this, you'll see on the monitor, I should have showed you that before, the different uh, grid patterns and charts uh, that are provided. And I'm sure that there's other ones maybe possibly available through uh, this company, which uh, still services these today. Uh, they're really great people. So. Uh, if you need to get in contact with them, uh, we can get you all that information. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just wanted you to know how to put this thing back together. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, here we are again with our camera. And here's the grinder that it's supposed to be mounting on, getting mounted on. So this is the mounting plate. Uh, this is, belongs with this unit, uh, special ground. And it has all a series of tapped holes. Um, in the front and in the back. Now in the front it has uh, two mounting positions and in the rear it has one. Uh, so it's a triangle, a three-point mount. And you can shift it left and right so it has a lot of shiftability and again you know you have complete up and down left and right with your uh, with your lens. So this plate here has to be mounted you know square and accurately Somewhere up here on this top here now, you have this flat area to work with. I think in there should be just about fine. You're going to need some kind of a spacer uh, over here. And uh, I'm going to ask my assistant John to pick this whole thing up here for me. Not, just yeah, grab by the lens and set it right down on that edge there. Okay. So once you get this up on the machine, um, 
You have to bring this in until you establish approximately a three inch distance from here. You don't want to be any further away. Uh, three inch, you could go further. You could probably go up well, another three quarters of an inch if, if that's what you want. Um, so bear in mind what I said. Um, you only have about a four inch spot where this thing is going to be in focus, like somewhere out here by my finger. Um, so that's where you're going to have to do your grinding. You're going to have to move this all the way over. Now if, this, if you had a smaller magnet on here, which is what some people do, they can move this over a little further. But in this case, your workpiece is going to have to fall within the range that you can make this minute focus adjustment over here. This machine is also equipped with an opti dress, which is not here at the moment either. It's being boxed up. That's going to dress a special form on the wheel. You may only be using this uh, just to check that form right on the machine as you just ground it. Uh, that sounds like a pretty, a pretty good setup to dress it with this and then to be able to visually inspect what you just dressed. Or people do actually grind a workpiece with a very sharp wheel and actually, you know, move this up and down after making little movements here. Um, so you might get this very close to the grinding wheel. In fact, it's been hit a few times. This is just a protective ring and you can purchase this new. Um, so that's what you need to know. Now if you're going to be working on a part that's six inches tall, then you have to know off the bat that this has to be raised up. Because you only have, from this point, from the face of the chuck up, you have about a total of two inches travel. Right there it stops, and if I was to put a ruler underneath there, that's going to be, that's going to be two inches. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. That's why we're not mounting this, because I don't know what you want. I don't want to drill holes in this. This has to be figured out by uh, the people in charge of whatever program this is, this is going to be used for. Uh, on the same hand, the other side of the machine, we've got this reflector plate. Now this one I told you didn't really matter where it went. Again, but you've got, it's, a, it's, it's heavy, it's a three-quarter inch steel block. And this thing is a two inch by whatever. This has to go up here and there are some long, long screws that are going to go with this to drop down and bolt this to that. I'm not going to do it right now. And then you've got your little swivel gate here that's going to drop into a little hole right here. And then you have a little screw that you put on the top to get your, this distance here could be anything you want. It's not critical at all. The only thing that was critical was that what we spoke about was the, the focus. I would set this all up just like this loosely. Look at it. Don't drill any holes until you, you know, you've, you, a lot of people have scratched their head over this and figure out what you want to do. So that's it for now. Thank you very much.